Creating these classes requires equipment and services that cost money. If you appreciate this education, please think about going to elithecomputerguy.com and offering a one-time or monthly recurring donation. Welcome back. So as you know, I'm Eli, the computer guy, and today I just want to do a small class talking about data types for values that you're going to be putting into your MySQL database. So this is one of those things, it's very important from a high level uh, point of view. So if you're going to be going out there, you're going to be creating a front end, you're going to be using MySQL in a production environment, it's very important to understand why data types are, are significant. And this is also one of the things that can really screw up new people. So this is kind of one of those, it's important all the way around. So what are we talking about when we're talking about data types for the values that you're going to be inputting into your MySQL database? Basically, all we're asking here is what type of information are you going to be inputting into your MySQL database as a value? So is it a name? Is it an age? Is it a price? Is it a file? You can actually put files, something called a blob data type into a MySQL database. Is it a date? Is it any number of different types of data types that could be a value in your database? Now, why is it important to designate what something is? Why is it important to designate that something is text or something is an int or something is a float or a decimal or a blob, so on and so forth. Well, one of the problems you run into in the real world when you put a database into a production environment is at some point you're going to have a front end coder that does something asininely stupid, right? They're sitting there, they've been working 100 hours uh, that week, they're trying to get a, get a front end deployed, some kind of submission form. So basically somebody's going to submit their name, somebody's going to submit their, their age, their t-shirt size, whatever else, and that's going to, to populate uh, your, your database. Well, the problem is, is if they're not thinking about things right and they do something stupid, basically what they could do is they could, they could have the name field try to input data into the age um, column in your database, or they could try to put the age field going into the name column in your database, and that can cause a lot of issues. Now, if it's if it's a big problem, right? So if you get a thousand new records and all of that information is screwed up, um, that might actually not be the worst thing that can happen to you. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to you is if only one or two uh, values are able to be inputted into the improper place within a database, that can cause you a massive, massive issue, right? So basically imagine if you're going to do something like uh, taking an average. So let's say you want to take the average of, of all the invoices. So you have the total for invoices, all the invoices your company is doing. So you have thousands and thousands and thousands of these invoices and you just want to see what the average invoice value is, right? So basically you will, you'll create a little script, it'll go in, it will grab It'll grab all the different values, it will add them all up, and then we'll divide them. Well, one of the problems you can run into is, you know, basically as that script is going through and it's saying, okay, this value is 100, and this value is 200, and this value is 300, and this value is Bob, and this value is 1,000, and this value is 4,000, and this value is 10, right? One of the issues you can run into is that basically when that script is going through to do the math, that it actually does try to add Bob, right? One plus Bob equals what? Right? This is one of those times where you actually hope, in a real production environment, you actually hope it fails. You hope it fails. Because if it fails, then you know that there's a problem and then you got to go in there and try to figure out what the hell is going on. <laughs> one of the things that happens in the real world sometimes <laughs> is 2 plus Bob <laughs> equals something, right? Um, and again, especially when you start doing um, large scale math, that can be a real issue. If, you, if you're adding up 10,000 different values and one of those values is Bob, it may skew the, the output that you're getting, uh, the end result that you're getting, but it may not skew it to such a degree that the human eye recognizes that it's screwed up. You know, you sit there, you look at it, go, huh, I, I thought the value of the invoices would be a little bit higher than that. But, okay, I guess if, if the computer tells me that this is what the output is, I guess, I guess that's what we're doing. We're going to have to go out there and start flogging some salespeople, right? And so the important thing with data types is what you can do is you can say this field in the database will only accept this type of data. If you try to put Bob into an int field, 
uh, that, that only allows a data type of int. So integer is a whole number, 1, 10, negative 10, 100, 1,000, right? So if you try to put Bob into a field uh, that only allows for ints, that will then fail out. And so that can be a useful thing. One of the problems, though, um, and this is the problem for new people, is if you don't understand the different data types, you can also run into some issues uh, when you're trying to put data into your database. So again, an int is a whole number. It's an integer, 1, 10, 1,000. 1,020, 10,020, negative 10,000, right? A whole number is an int. A float or a decimal, that is a number uh, that has the decimal point to it. So 10 dot... 12, uh, 100, you know, point, uh, 55, that type of thing. That would either be a float or a decimal. So one of the problems you can get into, um, again, when you're new uh, to coding for, for MySQL or any of these databases, is let's say you're trying to create it, create some kind of invoicing system. And so you have the, the price. And so it's, you know, $100.25 and $100 or $10.05. And, and then you're doing taxes and all that kind of stuff. One of the problems you can, you can run into is if when the data goes into the database, it strips off uh, the decimal point or you have some other kind of issue, then you can run into some issues there. And you think, well, wait a minute, I don't understand because it's an int, it's a number, it's a number value type, therefore I should be able to do this. But again, there's different number value types. There's integers, there's floats, there's decimals, there's that kind of thing. So basically all we're talking about when we're talking about the data types here is we're just talking about what type of data is able to be inputted as a, a value into a particular column within a database. Why this is important, again, for the high-level professionals is because you don't you don't want to find you don't want to find out what two plus Bob equals. It doesn't matter. You don't want that to happen. Uh, and why this can be an issue for new people is again, you go in, you're designing your database, you're feeling all good, uh, and then you you find out that there's a reason whenever you're whenever you have the code and it's trying to input data into the database that it fails out. And the reason it may be failing out or there may be a reason it's causing problems is because you're putting in a different type of data type than what you've assigned for that particular column. So that's what we're talking about data types here and why this is important. So for this class, I'm not going to go through all of the different data types. There are actually a shocking number of data types out there. And again, if you start dealing with databases uh, to a significant degree, you will learn and you will memorize all of these data types and you will figure out which one is the best to use in any particular situation. But for especially a lot of new people or if you're just trying to learn, we don't we don't need to go that far in the woods. We don't have to go that far in the woods for you to get the point. Uh, in the real world, when you were learning, this stuff basically what you want to do is you want to figure out okay I'm gonna have a form and this form is going to be collecting this type of data and then you go okay what what data type is that and you do a, do, do a Google search you go, okay that data types that and that data types that and that data types that and then you go to your MySQL database and you design your MySQL database and again that's how people do it in the real world so with that let's go over to the computer so I can show you I can show you one page that's kind of a cheat sheet gives you some explanation of these different data types and then we'll go to the actual MySQL reference where it gets much more into the weeds and maybe more important for you again if you're if you actually go out and just start designing things that will be going into a production environment. So as with anything in coding or really almost anything that you do in the technology world, if you're trying to figure something out, one of the best uh, things to do is just simply plug it into Google and see what shows up. When you're dealing with any kind of coding stuff, when you're dealing with any kind of like database type information, one of the important things to understand is people learn differently um, depending on who's, who's writing the information and how that information is presented. So you may be a more visual learner where all you need is something like a spreadsheet you may need something explained to you more in depth. And so it is important to understand that as you're learning these things, just going to Google and finding particular websites that explain things to you the best is really the easiest way to go. So again, we're talking about data types. Data types are specific things, but how you can get that into your head might be a little different for everybody. So you can just plug in MySQL data types here. Um, I found this one, a little MySQL tutorial. Uh, this basically looked like a decent little cheat sheet to give you an idea of the different data types. And there are a lot of data types. So we have char, bar char, tiny text, text blob, medium text, medium blob, long text, long blob, tiny int, small int, medium int, int, big int, float, double, decimal, date, date, time, time, stamp, time, enum, set, boolean, which isn't really boolean, it's actually a tiny int. But this gives you an idea of just some. This is some, literally, this is some. This is a few. This is a couple 
of the different data types that are available for you. Uh, and so basically with the data types, you have the type of data you can put in. So basically, is it uh, total alphanumeric? Can you put in uh, numbers and letters? So for char and var char, is it only numbers? So basically again, uh, with ints, uh, ints or floats, uh, you can only put in numbers. Is it whole numbers or is it decimal point numbers? So an int, a tiny int, a small int, a medium int, those would be whole numbers. So 10, a million, 10,000, those are ints, whereas a float or a decimal would be 10.99 or 11.25 or 1,026.33 type of thing. Um, if you go and you take a look at the spec thing, what this is telling you is basically how many characters can you insert into those values. For a char, you can have zero to 255 characters. For a tiny text, the same. Uh, for a small int, you can go from anywhere from negative 128 to 127. Uh, and basically this just gives you an idea of how much information that you can put in. So for a lot of values that you're gonna be starting out with uh, for, um, for your particular projects, um, these, these numbers probably won't matter a lot, but as you start putting in a larger individual uh, pieces of data into a single value, this may, may cause you some issues here. If we come down, we can take a look at, again, the, the MySQL numeric data type. So the tiny int, the small int, the medium int, the int, the big int, the decimal, the float, the double, the bit. Uh, so those are some different uh, numeric types. Uh, we can come down here to the strings. So strings are things like names, names, sentences, subject lines, message whatever else, char, bar char, vibin, vibinary, uh, tiny blob. Uh, so these are kind of cool, the blobs. I like the blobs. Um, so I do a daily talk show or a slightly daily talk show called The Daily Blob, where I just kind of ramble about random things that I want to talk about. And, and where the name for The Daily Blob came from is the blob data type. So the blob data type means you can literally put almost anything you want into the database. Not only could you put text or numbers or strings or whatever, but you could put MP3 files, you could put PDF files, you could put movie files or whatever else. You can actually put files directly into a database. Though with the blobs, this is one of those things where, again, what is technically possible and what is an acidinely stupid idea <laughs> can be the same thing. Uh, what people have found out over the years is it's generally not a good idea to put files directly into a database. Because remember, with the database, you have to think about things like how you're going to back up the database, replication strategies. So if you have a database that has to replicate the data to, to other database servers, right? So if you put large files into the database itself, that can be a can turn into a complete mess from an architecture standpoint. So what people have realized is a better way of doing things is you store a file onto a file server, a NAS, a SAN, or whatever else, and then basically you put the link to the file in the database, and then the database system only has to replicate the link. It doesn't have to replicate the file itself. So your storage solution is what you use to, to make sure that your files get backed up and your files have replication and all that. And in the database, you just have a link, and so then and it makes it easier from the database architecture standpoint. But you can have blobs there. Then you go to te tiny text, text, so on and so forth. Uh, again, things for like time. So again, we start talking about things like time uh, data types. Uh, again, what what type of time do you want inputted as a value into your database? Do you just want the date? So it gives you the, the value for the date. Do you want just the time? Do you want a time date stamp? Do you want a time stamp like this? Do you just simply want the year? Again, these are things to be thinking about when you're gonna be building out a real database solution. And then you even have things like MySQL spatial types. So, so basically for things like, uh, oh, shapes and that kind of thing. You, you actually can have data types for that. So this is, again, this is one of those where you can just use this as kind of like a notebook. You're sitting there, you're designing your little your web application, you know, you're you're looking you're looking at the field, and so basically, basically you you're creating your little input form, and so you're taking okay, this is the, the first name, the last name, uh, I don't know, the social security number, all this information, and then what you can do is with all of those different fields, you can then go to a little little. Uh, site like this and you can say okay well this needs to be this and this needs to be this and this needs to be this is an int and this is a timestamp and that's all that and then you go and when you're actually building your MySQL database then basically it's just just paint by numbers which really is how most of coding and most of technology actually works um, then if you really want to get in the weeds uh, you can go to the MySQL reference guide um, so basically if you go to um, dev.mysql.com uh, they have the reference manual for MySQL 
MySQL 8.0. Uh, now it is important. Um, I, I don't think, I actually think I forgot about talking about this in the other classes. Um, MySQL is, is a piece of software. So just like other pieces of software, uh, whether it's a server operating system or whether it's Exchange or anything else, there's versions, you know, there's newer versions and newer versions have features uh, that other versions don't have or they deprecate the features that previous versions did have. And so the current version of MySQL that I'm showing you folks is MySQL 8.0. So if you're using a legacy system, so let's say you have a database server that's been running for five or six years, you may, you, there's a good chance you're running an older version of MySQL. So just realize with things like data types or other things that I show you, your version of MySQL may differ. So you may have to go to the MySQL reference guide for 5.0. And again, they, they may have slightly different data types than what's available for uh, for 8.0. And that can, that can cause a problem, right? So if you're doing front end development, so you're coding, assuming data types exist when they don't actually exist, that can run you into some problems. But anyways, you can come here to the reference manual and this is where you can really get into the weeds, right? This explains just so much. <laughs> So much. <laughs> so we can go here to like numeric data types, and it just really starts explode. It starts explaining the difference between integers and small ints and decimals and all that kind of thing. And one of the important things to be looking at is again get a little bit more information on how these these data types work in the real world, especially if you're walking in behind somebody else and they they perhaps they perchance got a little too specific with their data types. Because remember, one of the, the, the one of the points of a data type is it's to constrain the type of data that can go into a value in a into a column so that you don't run into problems later. Well, one of the issues is when somebody's initially coding out a database, setting up the database, they may be a little bit too restrictive. And then things as things grow, as, as things get modified, uh, you may start running into problems and you may not know why you're running into those problems. Uh, so like with this, so they're talking about decimals. So decimals is a type of data type. Uh, and so they're creating in a salary value and that salary value is going to be a decimal and then if you look here basically five what five means is the total number of digits in the, in this particular number so it could be nine 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 or it could be nine hundred and ninety nine point ninety nine or it could be nine 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 point nine or it could be nine point nine 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 right so basically this first number here is how many digits how many numbers can be in the entire number and then the second digit here, a uh, number here, is how many uh, places past the decimal point are you going to have? So for this, it's two. So again, so you could have 999.99. You could have 100.10, right? And so this could, this could be an issue for you is what happens if things are starting. Let, let's say you, you created something that's going to auto tabulate. And so what happens if you get to a place where it flips over and now it's a thousand dot 99 right so now that would be six six numbers uh six uh, digits trying to go into that value slot um and you may run it or you will run into a problem because this will only allow for five and so those are some of the things that you need to look into with these data types and basically figuring out exactly you know what what the data type allows you to do again with things like numbers how many decimal points how many total digits a whole nine yards and then think about how that will work into the future and then if you start running into problems with your own system it may be a little issues like this that's causing you a problem so now that you have a better idea of what data types are, now we need to start talking about validation on the front end and database acknowledgements to the front end so that you don't run into major problems when you start designing your application. So as I talked about before, um, literally the worst thing that can happen to you with a database is when the wrong type of data is put into the wrong field and then you have something such as adding up or basically you have any kind of mathematical uh, algorithm run and basically you can get a complete mess. So, you know, one plus two plus five plus Bob plus Sue plus six plus eight plus nine plus 10 divided by Tim <laughs> is not something you ever want to have happen. So what you want with the, uh, 
with these data types and the values in your database is basically you want to make it so that you can't get the wrong type of data into a particular field and then that will mess everything up again when you're dealing with small databases right you have 10 records or 100 records you may look at this and be like ah that's fine it's not that big a deal but you start talking about databases with millions of records and again one person one of your front end developers does some, just one thing stupid and then puts a bob into a place a bob should never be and then all hell can break loose, right? So that, that's the important reason for why you need to define these data types. But then you need to start thinking about it. It's like, okay, so we want, we want the database. We want the database. So if a record is being put into the database with the improper data types, we want that to fail out. But what you need to start thinking about when you're developing your application is realize that there's two components to your application. We will talk about the back end and then we talk about the front end. So we want the back end to fail out. So basically, if somebody tries to put Bob into an age column, we want that to fail out. But one of the things you have to be thinking is, okay, well, what are we going to do on the front end about that, right? Because one of the big issues when you're when you're designing uh, software, when you're designing applications, is you can have things fail silently. So basically, somebody puts in information, the database component um, fails it out. But if there's no acknowledgement, if there's no acknowledgement from the database back to the front end, then then the user doesn't even know what happened, right? So so think about how many times you've plugged in information, you've gone through, you've plugged out a whole form, you've hit the submit, and then you just get a white screen. All your data went somewhere. Did it go in? Do you have to redo what you did? Did it not go in? You're not really sure what happened, right? So. When you're designing your front end, the first thing that you need to be thinking about is what is called form validation. And so what form validation is, is you use a programming language such as JavaScript. And so JavaScript, basically in real time, it's a client side uh, scripting language. So in real time, it can view the information that you're putting into a form and it can tell what type of data type it is. So basically, if you have a little box and that box says age and you try to type Bob, then JavaScript, depending on how you've coded it, uh, can make that little box turn red or it can do other things to say you're, 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 put, you're trying to put the wrong type of data into this particular field. Again, if, if you have a first name and you put in 12, uh, you can have a little red box show up uh, using JavaScript to say you're trying to put the wrong type of data into this field. Now, when you're looking at form validation, again, form validation can be done by any number of different programming languages. Sometimes it can be done in more or less real time with something like JavaScript. So JavaScript is viewing all of the different fields as you put the information in. If if it looks like what it's supposed to look like, you get the green, everything's fine. If not, it will fail out. Other times you're gonna form validation with PHP or Ruby or something like that, where you hit the submit button. When you hit the submit button, a validation process goes through, looks at all the different fields, verifies that all the different fields are the type of data that they're supposed to be. If they are, it then submits the information to the database. If not, it just it just reshows you the form, and that's where you'll see the form pop up again, and you'll have red boxes, or you'll have asterisks, or you'll have something like that. So one of the first things you need to be thinking about if you're going to be designing that front end is basically that form validation, so that people basically that, that's the whole thing like with data types and all this kind of thing is it supposed to be like multiple levels of security, it's supposed to be multiple levels uh, of, of protection, and so. The first level is the form validation, trying to make sure the users don't actually submit anything to the database that's incorrect. And then once it gets to the database, then making then making sure on the database side that the database doesn't actually accept that crappy information. Then after you have the form validation and everything gets sent to the database, the other thing you need to code for the for the front end is some kind of acknowledgement from the database. Uh, so this is where you'll see with, with different types of code basically some kind of you know okay or whatever acknowledge from the database so basically if if the record gets inputted into the database properly then that sends an acknowledgement back to your front end that says everything's okay and that's where uh, let's say you you make a purchase on an e-retailer and then it shows you the receipt right so you plug in all the information you plug in the things you want to buy you plug in the credit card information that gets submitted to the database 
it goes into the database, things get processed how they are, and then you get an acknowledgement back. Basically, your website is getting an acknowledgement back saying everything worked, and then you get a receipt, and so you know that the whole thing went through. On the, uh, conversely, though, if there is a problem for some reason, so maybe maybe for some reason that the, the records weren't inputted into the database, maybe maybe there's some random ass problem other than just simply the form validation, right? There's some quirky issue with the database, there's some quirky issue with the network, whatever else. The form was able to connect with the database server, but when it tried to input data into the database server, it failed. Then you want an acknowledgement from the database server to say it failed, right? You know, how many times have you sat there, you filled out a form and again there's no there's no reds everything's green everything looks fine but then when you go to submit it you'll get some kind of error that said for whatever reason the submission process failed and so you want some kind of acknowledgement from the database server from from the infrastructure that you've created because one of the worst things that you can have in the real world is basically what's called a, a silent a silent fail and so what a silent fail is is where you submit information to the database and then for whatever reason, it doesn't go into the database, but you also don't know that it didn't go into the database, so you think everything's okay, and then chaos will ensue in about a week when somebody's not receiving their order or whatever else. So you don't, you don't want anything to fail silently. Uh, if it's gonna fail, you wanna know that it's gonna fail. Um, so those are some of the things to be thinking about, again, from that front end and back end perspective. And again, this is where it becomes very important to understand that, that really, again, when you're dealing with a lot of these web applications or native apps, you know, with these database back ends, that the front end and the back end really are two entirely separate worlds, right? You can have somebody, and there are, there are, there are coders that all they do is they code for the front end, and there are coders that all they do is code for the back end. And if those two groups, if those two groups are not communicating and making sure that that what they're building uh, plays nice uh, with each other, you can run into some massive issues. So that's a basic introduction to data types in the MySQL world. Basically, data types in the MySQL world are just like the, the data types you will be using in most coding languages, right? You set you set what type of variable uh, you're, you're dealing with, uh, and then from that point on, that's the only value uh, that you're able to use. So again, whether it's int, whether it's characters, you know, whether it's blobs, whatever else, uh, you just figure it out in the beginning, and then you just go from there. Again, this is one of the reasons why it's very important to really think about how you're designing your database uh, because when you build the database the, the idea is is when you build it once it's built you really shouldn't be messing around a lot with the schema and and, and what type of data that that database is able to, to take in uh, because anytime you try to modify the database you may have you may create problems that you're not expecting so it's very important to really sit down at the design phase and really be thinking about okay what data is it that i really need um, like really think about that data too again when you're thinking about a number you know is that a number is it an int is it just a whole number 10 100 200 is it is it a number with a decimal point so should it be a float or should it be a decimal how many decimal points do you want again so if you're dealing with prices you only want two decimal points if you're dealing with some kind of math equation type stuff you may want 20 decimal points right again this isn't there's no right or wrong and that's the important thing the important thing to understand is there's no right or wrong answer uh, from a technical standpoint it's what you decide and so you go in there and you you code out all this and you create the data types uh, and then from there, hopefully that should prevent the wrong type of data being able to get into your system. Uh, the issue that you run into, though, is just like with firewalls, just like with any other security measures, if you if you configure things to be too tight, if you configure things to be too restrictive, you may run into problems in the future that you were not simply expecting. Again, like with that whole decimal data type where you can say how long the number should be. So whether it's five digits or six digits or 10 digits or whatever else, right? So you may, you may be thinking you have a small company, so the largest number you'll ever deal with is five, you know, a five-digit number or a six-digit number. Well, what happens if that company starts growing? That start company starts growing. You start getting salespeople. You're doing work orders and you're doing sales, and and all of a sudden, again, if you're doing some kind of auto tally thing or something else, you know, when you flip over from being a five-digit number to being a six-digit number, all of a sudden you may crash your database. You may crash your system literally because you know five years ago when you're you're coding up your database you're like man 
yeah, the, the most digits, you know, the, the most digits we're ever going to need is five digits. We are never going to be to a point where we'll need any more than five digits for whatever number scheme that you're dealing with. Um, and then you get to six digits. <laughs> it can be bad. It can be bad. So uh, just kind of kind of keep that in mind. Um, and again, with this type of thing, there are a lot of different data types out there. Again, whether you're using ints or floats or whatever else, go out, do the research. Just think about what you what you need to do, um, and then just plug it in. Again, it really this really is one of those paint by numbers. Okay, I need I need an age. So if it's an age, it's gonna be an int. Um, if it's a price, maybe it's a decimal point or a float. If it's a name, right? So I mean, it really is a paint by numbers. This isn't this isn't some genius thing in order to understand it. You just sit there, you look at the form. Okay, this is the information that I want to take in. So age will be int, and this will be this, and this will be this, and this will be this, and you go from there. Um, and so that's really that's just a brief introduction for you. So as always, I enjoy doing this video, and look forward to seeing you at the next one. Apparently, the type of content you just saw is not what Susan W. wants for the future of YouTube. This means that recommendations by YouTube to this channel have dropped massively and views are becoming comically small. I hate to ask. I used to say I would never ask. But if you could subscribe, like, comment, and most importantly, share the videos that you appreciate, that may help slow the death of this channel. Do remember that if anything at all happens to this channel, you can go to elithecomputerguy.com to view the content and access information not available on YouTube.